Hey YouTube, so um, I've just been uh, suggested a video, I was watching some other videos on YouTube and I was suggested a video on um, crimping electrical connections so um, I watched that video and it really had um, had a lot of views, I think it was like 700,000 views coming up and uh, this guy on there said uh, he was going to crimp some large cable and um, he pulled out some uh, some cable that was sort of like 6mm or something along those lines so something like that and in fact it was exactly like this because he um, he pulled out some RF cable some uh, green and yellow he then proceeded to crimp it uh, he looked at using a a much larger crimp and fog net over and whatnot. Basically, just doing a load of stuff wrong. Now, this guy does a lot of videos, and like I said, he has 600,000 on there. I'm lucky to get 60. So, um, make of that what you will. But I know how I crimp a cable, and it's, uh, it's not necessarily like he did it. Um, you will just have to decide which, which methods are right for you. But um, anyway, it, what he didn't show was, was crimping. Uh, larger cable so if you're going to connect to a start motor if you want to um, run a large motor you've got a large DC uh, battery bank you're going to need bigger cable you're going to need um, much bigger cable in some instances so um, most of the stuff that I use is HA7 RNF which is a double insulated uh, cable it is a uh, an excellent cable, it's easily worked with and um, available for most electrical wholesalers. Um, it's not cheap, I can't remember what the current prices are, but with copper going up, I mean, you can expect somewhere around uh, £1.50 a metre. So it's going to be approaching $2 a metre in America. I don't know what you charge for copper over there. And um, again, the bigger it is, the, the more it will cost. So. It's uh, it's worth spending on a good quality cable though. If you've got a big battery bank, these are perfect for a solder storage, for a starter cable, for making jump leads, which I did in a previous video. Although I did it in a horrendous fashion, and uh, this is how I'll be uh, this is how I'll be changing it. So um, that's that's a made-up cable. That one's ready to go. Um, this one was actually supplied and is one that I've not crimped so this one's used a, a newer version of the crimper I've got here and um, it uses very thin dies and it tells you how many crimps to uh, to make into the uh, into the lug on the crimper when you use it so um, it's got digital display it gives you um, the pressure used the number of uh, crimps how long until servicing and calibration etc etc so um, yeah the new crimpers are very good and um, not everyone's going to have a crimper like this but you can hire them uh, you can borrow them or you can um, possibly ask your electrical wholesaler to to do it for you um, there's this type which is battery operated which is great or I've got another one which I'll show you in a minute which is um, hand hydraulic this one um, this one replaced another hydraulic one I had which uh, was basically just the head on a um, hydraulic uh, hydraulic tube pipe and um, it went to a foot foot pump so you just pumped it by foot and then it closed it and the head was almost identical to that so there we go anyway um, the video I was talking about was half an hour long on how to crimp a couple of cables and um, I'm going to try and make it shorter but my videos aren't always a little short, I'll just try, I'll try and get across what needs to be got across so that's some 35mm cable um, I can't remember, if you, if you search uh, HA7 current carrying cable you'll, um, you'll get it online uh, so this is 70mm cable which is going to be good for around off the top of my head about 300 amps um, So this, this one's a fair bit bigger and again what you need to do is uh, get the right lugs. 
So, quite clearly, that lug's not going to fit on that cable. And that's um, that's not how you do it. You don't look at it and guess what crimp you're going to put on. It's not a, it's not a guessing game. Uh, so these crimps, when you look at them, see that one has 35 dash six on it. So it's a 35 uh, square millimeter cable hole and a six millimeter hole to connect through. 35.6. So in comparison, what we would need for this 70 mil cable uh, would not be that one. That's a 25.10. Would be a 70. So there we go. 70 mil cable. A 70-10 lug. Um, so that's actually a cheaper lug. You'll see um, when you buy them, you can get. Uh, you should really use the lug the same manufacturer as your um as your crimper. So in this case uh this crimper is a, a sembre. That's how you say it pronounce it. And um you would use, generally use a lug with uh the sembre manufactured and is designed for their dies. Um so you see this one's C rated and whatnot. Now um I've done tons of these uh previously uh, projects like uh rail track or um or anything safety critical that you'll need your crimper to be uh, tested. It'd be sent to a lab and tested. You'd do pull tests on the crimps. There'd be sample crimps kept. Uh, I think we had to keep sample crimps for five years on previous projects. Things like that. Uh, sample lugs would be taken on site randomly and tested. And um, when this is tested in the labs, they'll test things so that it meets its spec. So this thing clamps to 130,000 uh, newtons, or about 14 and a half tons, and uh, that will be tested. So what we need to do is find the dies out. So this crimper goes up to 400 mil cable. Uh, HA7 comes in. It may even go up to a thousand mil squared. Um, but that's very rare. Uh, I think 630 is typically the largest size cable you can get in this size, and it? it's generally it's generally not used. Certainly not what I see. Uh, when you go to that size, you'd be looking more at uh, buzz bars. So this is this not like this, but basically a solid copper bars would carry the current. Um, jump leads and things like that. Um, I would imagine you're going to be looking at around uh, 35 to 95 mil cable. 95 is perfect for batteries, generally a single string of batteries. Can't use any more than the 95 mil cable um, unless they're massive, massive batteries, you know, over 100 kilos. So anyway, that's uh, that's like a 10 mil die, that's a 400 mil die. These go in there, crimp your lug down. So, That's, uh, that's our 70 for the day. That would just pop in. Both of these. Now this is a uh, this is my crimper is on its last legs. It's actually uh, due for replacement, so I'll be getting one of the new one of the new nice ones. But these things obviously are not cheap. Um, and you're looking at a couple thousand pounds really for the uh, for an updated one. So I'll just get these in a sec. Right, so they're um, they're a little fiddly to get in. You've got to uh, push the uh, retaining knobs in there, and then uh, slide them in, and they come out the same way. So that one you have to you just have to close it up, push that in, and then slot them in. And that can be a little fiddly. So there we go. That's that done. Now what we need to do is strip the cable back. So what you would do is take take your lug place it next to the cable. Now you'll see this uh, this window into there. I haven't got any of our... There are some different ones that have got a larger larger cutout in there, which I prefer actually. Um, no, I haven't got any handy. But um, there we go, so you've got a viewing window. What you want is this copper to come up to around there. So you're going to uh, look where you see there. And, um, Use the best tool for the job, a Stanley knife. Mark it up. 
and then just slide in and cut around. Now you have copper cores coming off, I'm sure, but once you do, with a bit of practice, I did that terribly. Um, it's harder in front of the camera. So what you do is you do that. It's a, uh, usually I would do that square. Like I said, I'm trying to reach in and do this in front of the camera, so that's uh, that's not great. Um, but there you go. Um, no coppers come off there. You might get the odd strand if you do it really hard. Obviously, you can um, you can damage these strands and they'll come off, and it it would be a problem if you took it down a, a lot. But um, as you can see, a nice sharp blade. Uh, you'll get a feel for it, and you just be able to do it like that. Yeah, hopefully, you'll do it better than me and do it square. Uh, one thing to be aware: some of these uh, cables they do have. I'm not sure if it's going to show up on camera. There's it like a um, a clear plastic coating in there. Focus, come on. There we go. You can see that. Now you just need to be careful that that doesn't remain on the copper. So once you've done that, pop the log on. Log on. That was my 50 mil lug, so obviously that's not going to fit. Now don't. If you're going to if you're going to use this for an application which is close to the current limit and you don't want to bodge it, obviously don't cut it down to fit a different lug. Use the right lug. It's as simple as that. No guessing. No trying it on, they fold in the copper over, you just get the lug that fits, place it over, push it down, <laughs> as you saw rookie mistake, I actually measured it off that lug which is longer, so we're going to have a fair bit of copper showing here, um, so you don't want that, it's because I picked up that lug, what you do want is to see the copper coming up through that window okay we push it down um, and what you can do is take a hammer if needs be give it a tap like that and crimp it down now I'll just redo that because I'm not happy with that gap there um, a small gap is is perfectly fine and you would heat shrink over it but let me just redo that a minute just restrip that. Let's pop this cable on. So I just did it to the length again, as I did before, but with the correct lug. Um, so tap it on. Nice and tight. You'll see the copper has just come in through the hole there. Okay, you'll see that it's almost flush all the way around. And then that. Um, you pop it into the crimper. So, that's why I bring you in on the crimper. Very simple operation. Okay, that sits in the jewels. I'm not probably not quite going to get it on camera. This is really awkward to get the angle right under it. And then all you do is put it like that. And what I do is just go up so it's just snipping it. And then I put some pressure on the cable. In, holding it in firmly. Okay, the crimper automatically stops when the job's done. Press the button to release the jewels. Pop the crimper down. Just put him out of sight. And there we go. Right there, with the 70 stamped in it, so you know it's done correctly. You get a slight flare at the end, the crimp central, the copper can still be seen. That will then make an excellent joint. Um, and it, the other guy is quite right in several of his points, so you would never, never put solder on the cable. Solder is, um, has its advantages in some respects, but it is generally. Uh, inferior to a decent crimped connection um, and then to finish that off notice how I'm using a black cable this can be used for any any uh, any application so you can a pause and neg 
um, a phase what you would do is color code it and label it um, and you'd use colored heat shrink so in this case just because I've got it handy you would use some black heat shrink so this could be uh, this could be torn at both ends and made into a link in a battery system um, pop the black heat shrink over it okay and what you want to do is make sure you're clear of the shoulder come back clear of the shoulder there okay and the window it's going to come down and just sit there just sit around the back cover the joint and uh, that will be very good so let me get the heat here we go just grab the heat gun okay and there she is shrunk down There we go, so an absolute perfect connection. Now that, uh, like I said, I've had these, I've had my crimps tested before, um, pulled off by a lab, and um, we'll also cut into them and make sure the cross section is uh, is nice inside. So these, that is how you do it, that's the correct way to do it. And um, that is how you make off a large cable of a crimper so this is uh this is a cheaper crimper this is um as you'll see almost exactly the same the head's very similar and that just operates the pumping up the handle and it'll squeeze up obviously you put your dies into there job done and that's a um that's a hand hydraulic so you can get one of these these aren't uh, aren't too expensive that is um that is it, that's the cable made off. Uh, hopefully I didn't say mechanically or invariably too many times or, or anything else. And um, we're good to go. Thanks for watching.